Holy Gospel for today comes from Mark when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there's the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him, just as you he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I like to begin with songs, so if you know the song, great. If you don't know the song, great. All right, you ready? Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim to all the world I bore His sacred name. More of a older tune, but something that can inspire us today to lift high that which is precious, not just candy cross that inspires us to be here today. The cross of Christ and Jesus himself. But what are you looking for, folks? Did you come with anticipation or you came with something else? Did you come with that, hey, I want to be out of here. I've got Easter breakfast or Easter lunch coming up and I'm just doing this to pacify my spouse, my mother, my father. It's okay to be honest. It's okay. But I want you in this couple moments just to hang tough with me, all right? I'm just going to talk to you, share with you a message that I find pretty important, pretty significant. And some of you have lived this life out. Celebrating it every moment. Now today in the gospel reading, we see some women. They start a journey without ever knowing if they're going to get in. And yet that doesn't stop them. They begin the journey not knowing what's going to be next. How often have you started a journey that way? Or do you plan it all out? I'm going here, and then I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be done. These are the obstacles I might run into, or, I'm just going to say that's the way my wife does it, or you just start the journey and go, let it be an adventure. What do you think? Let it be an adventure. Let it be an adventure. Okay. What do you think? It's okay to plan it. It's okay. And you don't have to raise your hand, dude. We're not in class. Go ahead, jump out. You see that? I know where I'm going, but again, not necessarily how I'm going to get there. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. So people are still looking for Jesus. And they're looking for Jesus within you. The women show up at the tomb looking for Jesus and they find something else. They find something better. They find something more special. When you go looking for Jesus, do you have this preconceived idea that Jesus is going to be this cardboard figure? Or is he going to be interacting with you and loving you and calling you to greater things? 
Or is Jesus just one dimensional for you? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Last year, people were looking for Jesus in a various ways. They were looking at online, but they couldn't go out. COVID was the big thing. And if you remember, we had a drive-by service. About a hundred people in cars driving by me, some waiting about an hour just to hear and be with me for about five minutes or less. But they came and they heard that he is risen, he is risen indeed. We had communion together and then a prayer. And each moment that I shared with people was sacred. And it was my prayer that they would find Jesus in that expression, in that service, in that sacrifice. And of course, as people went out, who knows if that hope was fulfilled? Who knows? Only God. Only God. God was with those women and the encounter someone who was special saying, Jesus isn't here. He's gone. He gives them instructions. They are feared. They are seized with fear and amazement. Terror and amazement. I apologize. Have you ever been seized with terror and amazement. Yes? What do you think, girls? Roy? Yes? Can you want to share? No? <laughs> what do you think? Anybody want to share? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Amen, sister, right?
and I don't like to fail. But we have. So much so that when people say I'm a CNE or people laugh, oh, that's funny. Rather than going, apparently you don't know the message. You don't know the promise. You don't know the love of God that can change your life. Recently I was at a funeral and these folks were not CNEers. They were just folks who had never heard the message of the gospel. And if they had, it was probably a long time ago in a place far, far away. So I told them a story, a story that was reflected in my service in the military. And that's where I heard this story. And if you could bear with me for just a little bit, I'll share it with you. Okay? Okay? Fair? It's like story? It's a good story? Okay? You're looking at me like, would he be quiet? Okay. <laughs> I will. The story's not that long. So there was a band of brothers who lost a person in World War II. They lost a comrade at arms. They went to a monastery and they met the abbot who was there, the guy in charge. Also, there was a junior abbot, the guy who was the second in charge. So these guys came and said, we'd like to bury our brother, our comrade at arms, in the churchyard. And the junior abbot, the guy who was second in charge, said, sure. But the abbot said, no, no, no. You'll have to bury him outside the fence. And there was no changing his mind, so they went and they buried him outside the fence. Years later, a group of these brothers got back together and said, let's go visit our friend, our fallen comrade, and they went. And they looked outside the fence. They didn't need to go up to the monastery. They, he was outside the fence. They couldn't find him. They're looking for a grave outside the fence. They can't, can't seem to find him. So they went up to the monastery, knocked on the door, and who should answer but this junior abbot, who is now the abbot, the guy in charge. Old, but still there. They said, we're looking for our comrade. We're looking for our person, our brother who died. But we can't find him. We can't find him outside the fence. The abbot smiled and he said, you know, when you came before, the abbot said you had to bury him outside the fence, and you did. But the abbot said, never said, I couldn't move the fence. God's grace extends to you today. Each one of you. No one is outside of God's grace. No one. God loves you. When you start judging people, I would invite you to stop and say, wait a second. God loves them. Let me show them Jesus. Let me proclaim his message just by being nice. Just by offering a little hope. Just by standing with them if they're being bullied in this life. By standing up when others sit down. Today the question has been, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? It is my prayer that you know that Christ found you when he was crucified. Christ found you and he rose from the dead and Christ finds you today. Wherever you are in your pain, in your celebration, in your struggle, God is with you. I pray
pray that you'll go into the world and let people find Jesus in you and all of God's children.